Hello guys, my name is Dennis Kade. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to show you how to get and use OBS on your computer. OBS is a free and open source application that you can use to stream on services like YouTube, Twitch, and even Facebook. You can also use OBS as a virtual camera and also record your screen or capture your screen, which we are going to be focusing on today. So before we get into that, I'm going to show you how to get OBS on your computer. So to do that, you are going to head over to your browser and on the search field, you are going to search for obsprojects.com. Now this is the official website to download OBS on your computer. So as you can see right here on the website, you can download OBS on all the major operating system that is Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So you are going to go ahead and hit on the operating system you are using to download OBS on your computer. So after downloading the application on your computer, you are going to click on it to open and then go through the installation process. It's very easy. So after downloading and installing the application on your computer, when you open it, you are going to see something like this. So to get started with OBS, you are going to head over to your tools button right here and then you are going to click on the auto configuration wizard. When the auto configuration wizard is open, right here you are going to need to answer a few questions. First of all, you are going to specify what you want to use OBS for. As you can see right here, you have three different options. Number one, you have stream. Two, you have recording and you have the virtual camera. So like I said, I'm going to be concentrating on showing you how to use OBS to record or capture your screen. So I'm going to choose the second option. I'm going to select the second option right there. Please take note that whatever step I'm going to take in showing you how to use OBS to record your screen. You can also apply those steps in using OBS to stream or use OBS as a virtual camera. So after selecting your option, you are going to go ahead and click on the next button right here. So when you click on the next button, the next thing you are going to do is to set your video resolution and frame per second. So right here under the base resolution, you are going to choose your system's resolution so as you can see right here i have display one so if you have multiple monitors connected you are going to see all your monitors resolutions right here so you are going to click on the one ones in my case i have only just one monitor or i have only just one screen so i'm going to click on the display one right here and then right here you're going to choose your frame per second so i'm going to recommend you go for 30 frames per second and then you're going to click on the next button when you click on the next button the next screen you are going to see is the final result so right here show you the final results for your auto configuration wizard right here you can see the record the encoder the, your record quality your base resolution and your frame per second so if you are not fine with this result right here you can hit on the back button right here to reset whatever it is you are not satisfied with but if you are good with it you can go ahead and hit on the apply settings right here so now I'm done configuring my application to my own preference. Right now, I'm going to walk you through on how to start or how to record your screen on OBS. This dark part of the application is what is referred to as the scene. So down here, you have different panels. We have the scenes panel. We have the sources panel. We have audio mixer panel. We have the transitions panel. And we also have the control panel. So I'm going to walk you through on how to use all these panels to your own advantage. So now to record your screen, first of all, you are going to need to create a scene. So as you can see right here, by default, we already have a scene. So all we need to do is to add sources to this scene. So the next thing to do, I'm going to head over to my sources panel. I know you might be wondering what sources mean, so I'm going to show you in a minute. So to add a source, you are going to hit on the plus button right here. And then as you can see, you have different sources you can add to your scene right here on OBS. So to capture my screen, I'm going to hit on this display capture right here. When I hit on the display capture, it's going to need me to rename the source. So I'm going to simply rename this as screen recorder. And then I'm going to click on OK. So after clicking on OK, you are going to get this properties dialog box. So right here, you are going to make sure that this capture cursor is checked and then you are going to hit on OK. So after hitting on OK, now you can see that my screen is being captured. So now I have my screen being captured, but I don't have my voice being captured. My voice is not being recorded at the moment. So to make my voice be recorded, I'm going to add another source. So I'm going to hit on the plus button right here. And then I'm going to add the audio input capture. So when I hit on that, once again, it's going to need me to rename it. So I'm going to name this microphone. And then I'm going to click on OK. So when I hit on OK, once again, I get this properties dialog box. So right here, I'm going to hit on this device section. So when I hit on it, I get a list of options right there. So right now, I'm going to select my microphone and then I'm going to click on OK. 
So now that I've added my microphone, you can see that my microphone is active right here under my audio mixer. Now this is where I can watch the levels of my microphone. And then right here at the bottom, you can increase and reduce the volume of your microphone. So that's it. So right now, my micro my voice is being recorded and my screen is also being captured. But my system sound is not being captured. So to make sure that my system sound is being captured, I'm going to add another source. So I'm going to click on the plus button again, and I'm going to click on the audio output capture. So when I click on that, once again, I'm going to need to rename it. So I'm going to name this system sound. So I'm going to click on OK. It's okay if you don't want to name your sources, you can leave them at, on the default name, but I'm only naming mine because it makes it easier for me to identify my sources in case I want to edit them. So once again, you get these properties and then you are going to click on this device feed and then select where you want the system sound to be recorded from. So right here, I have my speakers. I want it to be recorded from my speakers. Sometimes you get speakers and headphones. So you are going to click on that and then you are going to click on OK. So now that I've added all my sources to my scene, now I can go ahead and start my recording. So to start recording your scene, you're going to go over to your control panel right here. So down here, as you can see, you have different buttons. First of all, you have the start stream button. So this is the button you press when you are about to stream, to start to streaming. And then we have the start recording button, which we are going to be using for this video. And then we have the start virtual camera. Next, we have the studio mode. So I'm going to get back to this for the end of this video. And then we have the settings. And lastly, we have the exit button, which is self-explanatory. So now to record my screen, I'm going to head over to the top. And then I'm going to click on this start recording button right here so when i click on the start recording button you are going to see that my screen will start recording immediately so at the bottom right here you can see the progress i'm 30 seconds in already so what if i want to pause my recording so to do that i'm going to hit on this pause button beside the start recording button so when you do that you are going to see that the recording is going to be paused so to resume your recording you are going to go ahead and hit on the pause button again for your recording to resume so when you are done recording and you want to stop your recording you can go ahead and hit on the start i mean you can go ahead and hit on the stop recording button right here so still on how to start and stop your recording on obs you can actually use keyboard shortcuts to start and stop your recording on obs so to do that you are going to head over to your settings you can go to your settings by hitting on this settings button right here or you can go ahead and hit on the fire button at the top right here and then hit on settings when the settings is open you are going to hit on the hot keys button in the hot keys section you get different commands right here you can set keyboard shortcuts for to set a keyboard shortcut for starting and stopping the recording you have the section right here so when you're on the feed all you need to do is to press the keyboard shortcuts you want to add so i'm going to press ctrl s to start my recording and then to stop my recording i can still use the same shortcuts so i'm going to use ctrl s one more time so underneath the start and stop recording, you also get the, the play and on pause recording. So you can also set keyboard shortcuts for those. So when you are done, you can go ahead and hit on the apply button right here. When you apply it, you can click on OK, and then it's going to X out of that. So when you want to start your recording, you don't need to come back here or you don't need to open OBS to hit on this button. You can simply press your keyboard shortcuts to start, stop, pause or play your recording. So when you are done recording to find what you've recorded, you are going to go ahead over to your first button at the top right here. And then you are going to hit on the show recordings button. When you hit on the show recordings button, it's going to bring you to the location where your recording is saved. So right here, as you can see, yeah, I have my recording. I have it on my desktop. So I'm going to preview that. You are going to see that my screen will start recording immediately. So that is, that's what I recorded. So if you look at this file, when I hover over it, you see that the file type is MKV file. And you can almost not work with an MKV file. So what you are going to do is to convert this file into an MP3 file. So to do that, you are going to head over to the files button. And then you are going to hit on this Remox Recordings button. So when you hit on the Remox Recordings button, you are going to hit on this ellipsis button right here. And then you are going to select the file. And then go ahead and hit on open. So when the file is open on the Remox recordings, you can go ahead and hit on the Remox button down here. So when you hit on that, you see your file will be immediately remoxed. So after the file has been remoxed, you can go ahead and hit on OK. So I'm going to click 
So I'm going to close this. And then when I go back to the recording, so right now I have two files. So right here, I have the converted record. Now it's on MP4. Now this is the previous one that is on MKV. So if you want your recordings to be on MP4 by default, to save the stress of remoxing, you can go over to your files and then hit on settings. When you hit on settings, you are going to go over to output. So right here under the recording format, you can change from MKV to MP4. But I personally prefer MKV, the reason being because, let's say for instance, I'm making a recording of, let's say, an hour or two. Unfortunately, my system crashed. If my recording format is set to MKV, my files or my record will be saved. But if set to MP4 and my system crash, my files will be lost. So my hours of recording will be lost. And you know that will be very frustrating. But if you are making short recordings, like let's say two minutes recording, less than a minute recording, you can go with the MP4. But just know that MKV is more safe. It's more like an insurance policy. So I'm going to leave mine on MKV. So right here at the top, we have the recording part. So right here, you can change where you want your recording to be saved whenever you are done. So if you are using OBS for the first time, by default, your recording parts will be on your videos folder. So I changed mine from videos to desktop. So to change yours, you can simply hit on the browse button right here. And then you can go ahead and select the location where you want your recordings to be saved. And when the location is selected, you can go ahead and hit on the select folder. And then you hit on the apply button and then you are good to go. So I'm going to OK to X out of this. So that's that. So that is it, guys. That's basically how to record your screen using OBS. So if you find this video helpful so far, please do to give the video a like and also support my channel by hitting that subscribe button and also turn on post notifications so you get notified when I post a new video. Thank you. So now we know how to use OBS to record our screen. I'm going to show you a few more interesting things you can use OBS for. So let's say for instance, I'm recording my screen and I want my video to be on one of the corners right here. So to do that, I'm going to add another source. But before I do that, I'm going to create another scene. So I'm going to head over to my scene right here and then I'm going to duplicate this scene because I want these other sources to be on that scene. So I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to hit on the duplicate button. So when I hit on the duplicate button, I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to say webcam record or webcam screen record. And I'm going to hit on OK. So here I have two identical scenes with different names. So I'm going to add one more source to this scene right here. That is my webcam scene. So I'm going to head over to my source and then I'm going to click on the video capture device. So this is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to hit on that and then it's going to need me to rename this. So I'm going to name it webcam and I'm going to click on OK. So once again, you get this property. So right here on the device, you are going to select the camera you are using. So I'm going to click on my systems webcam, which is the HP webcam. And then I'm going to click on OK. Okay, right now you can't see anything on my webcam because my room is really dark right now. And the quality of my webcam is not that good. But just know that this is my webcam. So I'm going to wave to the camera so you can actually see that's my hand. So right now, this is too large for the screen. So I'm, so I'm going to reduce this by dragging on the sides right here to reduce it. And then I can also move it to wherever I want on my screen. So I'm going to move it down here. So right here, I have a video of me on my screen. So just the way I can move and resize this video capture device or my webcam, I can also do that to my screen right here. So when I hit on it, you see this red border around it. So with that, I can move and I can also reduce the size so i can also crop the screen so to do that i'm going to hold down my alt key and then i'm going to drag the sides so for instance i want only a particular part of the screen to be to be shown i can crop it to that you know you get it you can also crop your video capture device right here so now I have added a video of myself on my screen. So one more thing I want to add is my logo or my name on my screen. So what I can do, I can simply go to my source one more time and then hit on this image source right here. So that's one way to do that. Another way to do that is to simply drag the image 
from wherever it is on your computer. So I have mine on my desktop right here. This is it. I can just simply drag it into the scene right here. So just like I did my video capture device on my screen, I can reduce the, and increase the size of my logo right here. So I'm going to reduce it to this size and then I'm going to put it at the top corner. Okay, let's say this side of the screen. So that's it. So now that I've added my logo or my name to my screen, now this video capture device is looking to play. And I want to add like a border around it. So to do that, I'm going to head over to my source one more time and then I'm going to click on the color source. So with the color source, I can add solid colors to my screen. So I'm going to rename this background or border and then I'm going to click on OK. So to select a color, you're going to hit on the select color button and the right here, you see your color palette will open. So I'm going to say something like a, let's say yellow right here. And I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to click on OK again. So I have my solid color on my scene. So I'm going to reduce it to size. And I'm going to place it here. So I want my video capture device to be on top the solid color right here so to do that i'm going to head over to my source and then i'm going to move my video capture device which i renamed as webcam i'm going to move it up on top of my border so when i do that you see that my video capture device has come up and it's now on top of my border so that's it now it's looking okay so I'm going to group this video capture device or my webcam and the border together to operate as one unit. So to do that, I'm going to group it right here on the source. So I'm going to select both of them. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, select both of them, and then I'm going to right click on it and then go ahead and hit on group selected items. So when I do that, you're going to see my group has been created. So I'm going to rename that as webcam and border. So I'm going to collapse this. So that's it. Now I can move this wherever I want as one unit. I can also reduce the size. So I'm going to move it back here. So if you look down at your source panel right here, on the sources you have these buttons, you have this eye button, and you have this lock button. So when you click on the eye button, so let's say I click on the eye button on this, my webcam and border. So when I do that, you see my webcam becomes invisible. If I do that to my name too, it goes invisible too. So basically the eye icon hides your sources. So let's say for instance, you are working on your screen and you don't want some of your sources on your scene to move. You can simply hit on the lock button to lock them down. So that's it. So right now I have two different scenes that are almost identical. So if I switch between these scenes, you see that it's basically just cutting in. So I can add a better transition to this scene. So this is where the transition panel comes in. So under the scene transition, I can add different transitions. So let's say I go with this swipe in. So when I switch between these scenes right here, so that's really nice. So you can actually set a keyboard shortcut or a hotkey to switch between scenes. So to do that, you're so going to head over to your settings one more time, and then you're going to click on the hotkeys button. So you are going to look for the scene transition command. So right now, as you can see, I can set shortcuts for my different scenes. So I have my first scene right here, which is scene, and the second one, which is webcam screen record, which are the scenes I created right here. For the first one, I have this set of commands I can set keyboard shortcuts for. So I want to set keyboard shortcuts to transition to this scene. So to do that, I'm going to hit on the field and then I'm going to set let's say the letter D to transition to that. And for the next scene, I'm also going to set a transition for that. I'm going to press the letter R for that. And then I'm going to click on the apply button and then click on OK. So when I press the letter D on my keyboard, the scene switch, if I press arrow, it switches to. So that's it. That's how to use scene transition and also set hotkeys on OBS. So before I go, I said I was going to show you how to use the studio mode. So when you click on the studio mode, you see that the screen is divided into two parts. I have the preview section, I also have the program session. So now the program scene is the one that is being broadcast. 
So if you are doing a live stream, this is what your audience are going to be looking at. This is what they are going to see. While on the previous scene is where you do your, or where you make changes to your scene, where you do different editing to your scene. So let's say for instance, I want to adjust my scene a bit. So let's say I do this. So as you can see, it does not affect the program part. So I'm going to move this to the middle and then move this here and this here. So I'm just going to do a little adjustment to this scene. Now I'm done adjusting my scene and it's ready to be shown to my audience. So to make them see it, I'm going to hit on this transition button right here. So when I hit on the transition button, you're going to see that the new layout is being displayed on the program section. So that is it for this video guys. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a like. Please do where to support my channel by hitting another subscribe button and also turn on post notifications so you get notified whenever I post a video like this. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one.